Good morning, welcome back. It's 25 degrees and it's 10 a.m. And it's also my final day with the Thruxton. So I thought I'd make the most of it. Head out into the English countryside. Nice little two hour ride and then somewhere, I think it's around about 30 miles in that direction. Go and meet Monica in the small town of Orford. Grab a coffee and a cake from what's meant to be an award winning bakery. Just could not be a more perfect day. There is no one around here. Glorious blue sky. And you won't be able to hear it from the microphone, but just the sound of birds singing. So glorious. I'll give you an update on the Bonneville as well, just before I head off. It's now Thursday. I dropped it off on Sunday when I broke down. So it's been with the mechanic for about three and a half working days. The mechanic almost immediately could understand that it needed the top of the engine removing and sent off to a specialist. So the top of the engine's been removed, it's been sent off to be completely recoiled because the thread has totally sheared where the spark plug goes in. There's a chance I'll get the bike back tomorrow, Friday. And the latest really I need it back if I'm going to make it to Scotland is Tuesday, but I think it should be fine. Although I am expecting at least a decently chunky repair bill because you've got to remove everything, remove the top of the engine, send it off, put it back on, make sure it works. There's a decent amount of man hour or man hours in that. So it will be the biggest amount of work I think the Bonneville's ever had. So fingers crossed, my bank balance can take it. I'm still fairly new to the Suffolk area after spending about eight years in South East London. And the feeling of space is so incredible. In South East London, for example, it would take 40 minutes to get outside the M25, the big motorway, and find anything that resemble, resembles open countryside. But here in Suffolk, ride for 10 minutes and you've got beautiful winding country lanes, 700 year old church to the right hand side, tiny little country track to the left and in the middle you've got this no one around it's incredible the problem is it takes twice as long to get anywhere because i keep stopping and looking and taking some pictures thruxton's over there it's enough time wasting fully kitted out in Ryden Sun's brand new 2023 collection. Ryden Sun's is a vintage retro inspired biking brand. That's the wolf jacket, the rally cargo trousers, worker boots and the wolf gloves. I'll leave all of the, the items in the written description below but it's fantastic for warm weather because it's some of the lightest gear that I've ever owned. This denim jacket, it's got a mesh lining inside, it comes fully armoured, so elbow, shoulder and back, but it's so light and airy, it feels like you're just wearing a normal item of clothing, so when you jump off the bike you're equally as comfortable even now. And I've just checked the temperature and it's 28 degrees and it's still beautifully cool. And something that I've never owned or almost never owned before, not to my knowledge, a pair of cargo trousers. But these are just such a beautiful fit with pockets on either side, on the thigh. Again, they come with hip protection, knee protection as well. 
and it's just such a great fit. I love them. The worker boots, zip on the inside, ankle protection left and right, and finally the gloves with extra protection on the palm of the hand as well. And again, really, really comfortable. Everything very, very stealth. So on, off the bike, you really wouldn't know it's biking gear. I love stuff like this. So if you are interested, you can click on a link in the description. I've listed everything there, but that's Ride and Sons gear available at XL Moto. Oh, and look at where I am. Just one of the many churches I pass by. That's a beautiful little place, Pump Street Bakery. That's a multi-award winning bakery. They make their own chocolate, they bake their own bread. Coffee delicious. Before they took over it, for 20 years, that building was completely deserted and abandoned. In a previous life, it was a post office, a Barclays bank, and now a brand new lease of life. The food's delicious. Cheese sandwich with pear. Who could have thought that's so delicious? Quite rare to see these now. Mark One Street Triple Triumph. Gold forks on the front, chrome headlamps. For me, this is the pick out of all of them. The original one, the one that started everything with a colossal success story that the Street Triple is. And it started all from here, the 675. I remember when I was looking at my Speed Triple, this was consider or under consideration. The only reason I went for the Speed Triple is because it had a bigger engine. And bigger meant better for me back then. Had to be bigger, but this is beautiful, especially in this Kermit Green. Oh, they've aged brilliantly. That is a lovely, lovely looking bike. And without question, I think a future classic. I remember when I was looking at these bikes and they had bike reviews on the bike magazines, top 10 bikes, top 100 bikes, whatever of the year. This was always, always either the very top or right at the top. It's a benchmark bike. I don't think there's anywhere I would recommend more highly than Orford. If you're looking to come over to the UK for holiday or if you're British and you've never been here, it's exactly what I think people would expect a little British village to be like. It's so perfectly kept and maintained. And I don't think it's changed in 200 years or so. I think everyone here must have signed a contract to confirm they will respect their houses, the surroundings, and they will realize how lucky they are to be living in such a historic little place. It's, it's glorious. Go to Pump Street Bakery, grab a coffee, have a bit of lunch. Don't come on a Tuesday because it's closed then. Enjoy this unbelievably pretty village and the roads around it because it's just countryside all around. There's no city two minutes away or something like that. This is all completely cut off just with unspoilt countryside, winding lanes, winding lanes all around. I could go on and on, but Monica, just soak it in.
Final thoughts on the Thruxton. It feels a little bit like I can imagine owning one of these houses, like you're owning a bit of British history, but you have to really decide what kind of rider and what kind of riding you're going to do because it's such a restrictive bike. For example, if you're going touring or something like that, it just simply is not comfortable enough. And even if you're going for, let's say, a three to four hour ride out into the countryside, the weight on your wrists, especially at slower speeds, is noticeable genuinely from about 15 minutes or so. But once you get to 60 miles an hour, the wind actually starts, starts pushing back on you, so the weight becomes less apparent. So the key to that, just make sure wherever you are, you're always doing 60 miles an hour minimum and the weight on your wrists will be fine. So there's a nice consumer tip for you. It's a lovely machine. It's very, very special. I wouldn't be able to buy one as my only bike purely because of the, the focused element of it. It can do one thing for me easily and that's lovely Sunday morning rides out, but it just isn't quite rounded enough a bike for me at least, to be an only bike. But definitely if I had space and the financial means, a bigger garage, slightly bigger bank balance, I would have this in my garage without question. I'll be sad to see it go. A lot of lovely memories with it, but I'll also be glad to hopefully get my Bonneville back because when I was sitting from the Bonneville to the Thruxton, I let out a huge audible sigh of relief when I jumped on my Bonneville because it felt so ridiculous ridiculously comfortable and we'll end it there thank you so much everyone for watching please do give the video a like subscribe to the channel and i highly recommend come over to orford it's a beautiful place